That soil has a pH. I know it, but I don't know what it is. Let's figure it out and let's run some experiments and comparisons. For the purpose of this experiment, I decided to use the rapid test. This thing is widely available across the country in just regular stores down the street, and they're very easy to find online on Amazon. They don't cost very much. So these things seem the easiest. I mean, it's a little gauge that you hold and you stick the stick in the ground and you see what the meter says. The problem is most people say that these are not particularly accurate. So I wanted to try this and compare it to the pH soil tester here where you're doing a little bit more chemistry, mixing water and soil and whatever magical stuff is in these little pills in this thing. So I'm gonna pull some soil and I'm gonna run a few tests with this and compare it to a few tests with that and see just what level of pH is sitting right there on my lawn. Both of these kind of soil tests, when done properly, require soil that's a couple inches down below the surface level. Basically, the surface soil can be completely different than the lower soil level. And this lower soil level is really what we care about because that's where the root system for our grass is. To do this test, you could use a soil probe or what I'm going to be using is this pro planting tool, this pro plugger. There it is. I've featured this in a few other videos. These things are super handy. So what I'm going to end up doing, you can see where I'm at. I'm just here in my main yard. I'm going to do six in a line, and I'm going to stagger them. So here are my holes. I'm going to make a slurry in here and use the probe, and there and use the probe, and there and use the probe. Here, I'm gonna take the bottom little bit of soil from this, from this, and this, and do three separate tests with the little test kit. Now, the reason I've been doing this is mostly because there's a lot of talk about these probes not working very well. Uh, the test kits aren't the best solution. Uh, a full soil analysis will probably give you the best idea of what your soil pH is, but they are supposed to be better than the probe. I want to compare just to see side by side what the difference is. Now, according to the test that I'm doing, you're supposed to go down, according to the packaging, it says five inches down. That's probably about four inches or so. Uh, that's good enough for me. Um, and then it says to put distilled water in there. Now, I'm putting tap water in there. Um, so the results are not going to be perfect. But hey, I'm not a scientist. I am going to be using the exact same water on all six tests. So in my opinion, they're going to be normalized. What I do want to see is I want to see what the reading is on all three of these holes that I'm making a slurry in the ground. I'm going to take the probe and stick it in there. I'm going to average out kind of roughly what each one is so I can have an average. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the other three tests except for using the soil test kit. One of the most common times of the year to do this is winter. Most people do full soil tests in the winter, but figuring out your soil pH is probably more important than just about anything. So even if you're not gonna go and do a full-on soil analysis, these things are really cheap. You could probably head over to Walmart, Home Depot, or some other like farm and garden store um, and pick up one of these tests for very little money. I don't think I even paid $10 uh, for one of those two products, I don't know. Uh, they weren't very much. All right, so now for these test kits, these Repetest uh, soil tester kits, these are supposed to be more accurate than the probe, and I think that they're supposed to be a little bit easier to use, and they take longer. Maybe that's a bad thing. I don't know. It takes longer, but it's supposed to be more accurate, uh, and in my opinion, more easy. So you just pop these things open, 
Um, again, these things are very, very inexpensive. I don't even think I paid five dollars for this test. Uh, and you get 10 tests in here. You get these little capsules, they look like medicine. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna add a little bit of soil and we're talking a little bit, just a tiny bit right up to this line here. Then you're gonna pop one of these little capsules, uh, the contents on the, onto the inside of this and then add water up to that line. You're gonna shake it up, let it sit for an hour. That's why I say it takes longer. Now, this is always taking a long time whenever I do something here because I'm doing it on video and I'm doing crazy things like six of them at the same time. Uh, but if you're just doing one, it's, this takes about as long as it takes to punch a hole, pull some soil up and shake it up and wait for an hour, go have a beer or something. literally it it's like just a tiny tiny bit uh, in an ideal situation you, there would be no organic matter in here organic matter it's our soil of course there's organic matter in it but if there are large uh, there are large sticks or large long roots uh, something obvious in there try not to put that in there try not to put rocks in there uh, that's going to change things. It's the same thing with a slurry, but uh, it's even harder to make sure that there's nothing like that in there. Just do your best. Now from here, I'm going to take one of these little capsules, snip off the end, make a mess while you're at it, pour it in here. So now you got a bit of dirt, you get the powder, and then we're going to add water up to the line and shake it all together so it's kind of this mud, kind of this, this soupy mud. Now, when you do this, you get the lighting just right here. When you do this, it just looks like mud. I don't know where the best lighting is. It's just mud. That's all. So now I'm going to sit here and wait one hour for the for the dirt to settle and for the color to change. That way we'll get a good idea of what the pH is in that particular hole. Certainly it's important to do a full soil analysis, but it's super important to do this because the pH of your soil is actually what dictates the nutrient availability of basically everything in the soil for your grass. The major nutrients in PK have a pretty wide spectrum of pH uh, availability. Uh, phosphorus uh, isn't quite as available on the more acidic side of the scale, uh, but generally speaking, all three of them can be uh, uptaken, uptaken if that's a word, uh, into the plant fairly easily. The problem is the micronutrients. A lot of the micronutrients are available in that uh, slightly acidic range, but some of the mic micronutrients are only available at even more acidic levels. Things like iron and manganese and whatnot. As your pH gets higher and you get closer to the alkaline side of the scale, most of these micronutrients stop being available to your grass plant altogether. All right, so here is the Repitest soil pH meter that I'm gonna be using. And I'm gonna be putting it down into this hole. You can see there's this slurry of like liquidy mud down there. The test kit tells me to polish this part right here of the wand, but not the tip. So I've done that already. And then you plunge this down into the mix and wait. It's supposed to go in extremely easy. And then we wait a minute to see what happens. All right, now a full minute has passed. In fact, I gave it two minutes. And this soil probe down in there is telling me that I've got a pH just barely over seven. 
I'm going to call that 7.2 maybe. Now if that's accurate, then that means that this soil is going to have a hard time picking up some nutrients, some of the micronutrients, and definitely some of the iron that I plan on putting down on the lawn uh, at the end of winter going into spring. But the soil probe isn't always as accurate as the test. Let's take a look at my first test. All right, a full hour has passed and the dirt has settled. You're supposed to let the direct sunlight go through this. You focus in on it. And you can see that the color of that is slightly less dark than pH 7 neutral, but it's definitely not getting into the kind of burnt umber orange color of 6.5. That leads me to believe that this test is telling me that my soil is probably somewhere in the 6.8 to 6.9 range. Now that's just one probe and one test. I'm going to do the other two probes and the other two tests. And I'm going to average it all out. But right now, just considering the fact that both of them came back in that neutral range, it looks like I'm going to have to do a little bit of work to bring the pH of my lawn down just a bit because I'd rather have it down closer to 6.5. I just started my next testing. I think I'm going to run out of sunlight here, but uh, I'll have to follow up tomorrow with the results of these. All right, I just finished my third soil probe test on the third hole. This one's been down in the hole for about two minutes, and you can see that is still all three of these have shown up to be just barely alkaline. This one seems to be slightly uh, slightly lower than the first one. Looks like it's creeping down to about 7.1. Uh, this one was 7.2, and I'm calling that one was 7.2 as well. So this is changing a little bit, but not by much. We'll have to see what the other soil tests, like the actual chemistry experiment kind of looking soil test shows to see if it averages out to be slightly acidic, kind of in that 6.8 range. We'll see. All right, the sun is pretty much down now, but I got enough sun in the sky to be able to look at this second test here. And if that doesn't look pH 6.5 to you, then maybe I'm a little bit crazy. But that, I'm going to call that slightly above 6.5, probably 6.6. .6. So uh, that's interesting because the first one came back I called it about 6869. I'll do one more tomorrow to average them all out. As a rule of thumb, grass is probably going to be fine anywhere between 5.5 and 7.5 on the pH scale. However, you're going to have a little bit of issues on the low end of that spectrum and on the high end of that spectrum. As you get down closer to 5.5, microbial activity is going to start dissipating. It's gonna start like getting sluggish uh, because the soil is getting too acidic for all the uh, beneficial microbes and little things that you want in the lawn. And as you get too alkaline, you're gonna start having a lot of nutrient deficiencies. Also as a rule of thumb, micronutrients like calcium, magnesium, those things are going to uptake just fine into the upper 6.0 range, or let's call it like 6.8, 6.9. However, other nutrients like manganese, iron, zinc, things like that are going to have a hard time getting into the grass plant efficiently as you get closer to 7.0. That's going to be an issue for me this coming year. Nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, all of those are going to be fine throughout the year in that 6.0 to 7.0 range probably even a little bit higher than that for me i'm going to have to work a little bit on lowering my acidity but not that much i might not even take the step to putting down sulfur or any other product and i might just let nature take its course we'll see i'll have to decide later on considering the fact that grass is going to be growing anywhere between 5.5 and 7.5 usually your optimal zone for ph is going to be between 6.2 and 6.5 that's going to be the sweet spot for nutrient uptake for all of the micros and the macros. All right, it's the next day. You know, because I'm wearing a new shirt. Not that I could change my shirt or anything, but the sun is in a different spot. So here, let's look at the third test. I did this one today. That to me looks extremely pale green, which would put that under pH 7.0 but it's not orange, so it's above 6.5. I'm gonna call that about 6.8. 
Now yesterday I recorded one that I called 6869 and I recorded another one that I called about 66. Uh, this one I'm calling about 68. So I'm gonna get put the average at 68. That's what I'm going to consider my lawn uh, to be right now at this moment in time 6.8 which is slightly acid but nowhere near optimal optimal I want it to get down closer to 6.4 6.3 something like that so I am going to work on that a little bit over uh, this coming season however I'm not going to stress out about it because I'm still in a pretty good zone I punched holes in the lawn let's repair it